We were up in uh, the Fulmore Shoal system with the Clowitzies, the First Nation Guardians, and you know, that's where a lot of grizzly bears are. And of course we show up, we go in, we start working, and then yeah, a grizzly bear just decided, you know, had enough of us and it was time for us to go. And that's just part of the project. And how cool is that? How many people get to see, you know, grizzly bear, cubs and an adult grizzly bear? I'm Tom Reed, I'm the uh, West Coast Program Manager and I'm the Program Manager for this project. The Nature Trust of BC is one of the longest not-for-profit environmental organizations in the province of BC. It's been around since 1971. Primarily focused on securing conservation lands, um, ecologically significant lands, and then working to manage those lands um, in perpetuity for fish and wildlife habitat. This project, the BC Shrift Project, came about as we were looking for years to come up with a, a study to look at some of these estuary sites to see are they going to be resilient over time with climate change and um, we started to pilot this resiliency study um, up and down the coast partnering with First Nations and that's what we're trying to do is determine if these sites are going to be resilient over time to help inform management and enhancement decisions. Day to day on this project is, is a lot of um, communicating with the team and consultants about how we're doing and, and letting them de determine the work plan. And then a lot of time I will be communicating to our senior management as well, just strategically how the project's going, are we, is there any risks to the project, um, and then to the funder themselves. So it's a pretty diverse um, assemblage of partners working on this project, and which makes it uniquely challenging, but also extremely rewarding where we're bringing all these different um, academics, First Nations, NGO groups, and senior levels of government together, all determined to make sure these estuaries and, and ecosystems are resilient over time. I think it just shows the power of like a really transparent, respectful partnership and what you can do. Whatever, whatever the issues there are, you put it aside and, and find a common set of values and pretty much the momentum starts and you can't stop it. So it, that's, that's what I'm most excited about. So why should people care about estuaries? There's a, the statistics that are out there that, you know, they only represent 3% of BC's coast, but they support 80% of fish and, all fish and wildlife in BC at some stage of their life cycle and life history. So if people start thinking, of, you know, you really think about that, it's pretty phenomenal that such a small piece of a landscape can support so much. And it's, it's one of the things that I think oftentimes may be forgotten. But when you get to an estuary, it's kind of like the connection between the marine environment and the upland environment. Everything mixes, the nutrients coming out of the watershed meet the nutrients coming from the marine environment and create this hugely productive ecosystem that supports all that fish and wildlife. And so when you start hearing these projections of we're going to have over a meter of sea level rise, if you look at the coastal map of British Columbia, you realize that a significant portion of these estuaries will be lost. And in some cases, like here at the Kauk, there's not a lot of space for them to migrate to. They'll come up against the mountain range or geological features that just won't allow, you know, this elevation band to thrive where it settles out. The reason why most people love living on the coast of BC is to walk on beaches, go to these river environments, um, go look at an estuary, and when they start thinking about sea level rise, and it can result in uh, ecosystem collapse and the loss of those beaches, I think that starts to resonate with people to go, okay, we need to do something. And I'm cautiously optimistic that we will be able to reverse the course of what's happening. It makes me feel old, start thinking about my children and grandchildren, but you know, some of the First Nations we work with, they're talking multiple generations and I'm sitting here talking about one and they're talking about thousands of years of this is why it's important and what are we leaving for our children's children. That's why I got into this field. You know, I didn't think I would, but you know, I started working down, going, yeah, I gotta do something. 